Hey guys, my name is Callum and welcome to my Doctor Who Series 11 reviews where every week I will be discussing my opinions on the latest episode alongside a very special guest. Just before we get started, a couple of notes. If the sound quality isn't as good as it normally is when I'm doing uh, videos on my own, that's because I'm talking to all the people I've got on over the next few weeks over Skype, so the audio quality isn't perfect, but you should be able to hear us all right. Also, don't expect a load of like pictures and videos um, over uh, us talking like there is for some of my other sort of discussion talky videos, just because obviously I'm hoping to get out one of these for each episode, so that's like a video every week, like without fail, hopefully. So I kind of can't spend too much time editing them. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoy hearing what we have to say. Um, and without further ado, let's get started. Hey guys, and welcome back to another Series 11 review, where today I am joined with Richard Lloyd. Now, you may know Richard from his uh, brilliant YouTube channel, uh, which I'm a big fan of. Uh, and today we're going to be discussing our thoughts on episode seven. God, we're like so nearly the end of the series now. I uh, know, yeah. Kablam. <laughs> uh, Kablam. Kablam. Exclamation mark at the end. Can't forget that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Kablam. Uh, so, uh, start how I normally do uh, by asking you what were your like expectations going into this episode? Did you? Were you excited for it more than like any other ones, or what did you think? Uh, going into it from the next time trailer and the images and stuff that we'd seen from it, and the Children in Need uh, clip as yeah. well that we got last week. Yeah, I, I was really looking forward to it. I thought it was going to be an ace little episode, and it, it, I think it did turn out to be. Uh, I, it was good, I think, to see um, and in the trailer the robots. They were like one of the things I was looking forward to. Yeah. Because yeah. monster wise, this series has not been anything too great and i thought they'd be a, a nice classic kind of yeah. doctor who villain um and, and visually as well I did the, the concept of a big planet-sized amazon warehouse uh, yeah intrigued me so um so yeah i was i was looking forward to it really yeah yeah my, i mean i'm pretty much the same as you i was i was really mm. looking forward to it quite uh a lot because of lee mack um which is mm. a bit silly but i'm just quite a yes. big fan of him <laughs> Uh, if, and if, she has an intelligence as well from Broadchurch. I was looking forward yeah, to seeing her. Yeah, yeah, the guest cast nice. was really good, actually. Yeah, overall. Yeah, nice to see her and Jodie yeah. together again. Mm. Yeah, um, yeah, I, it, it was, it was just funny to see uh, <laughs> Lee Mack in it. It was, it was kind of the yeah, similar, yeah. the similar kind of feeling we had, or I had with uh, uh, Bradley Walsh as Graham, like at the beginning, like you just can't get used to the fact that it's Bradley Walsh in Doctor Who uh, <laughs> and this time it's like oh it's Lee Mack in Doctor Who like this massive comedian uh, but yeah I, I mean this is kind of moving on to his character specifically a bit which I was going to mention later but uh, he, I just found it quite funny because he was he basically was just Lee Mack like he wasn't really yeah. like, <laughs> putting on a sort of role he was, but you he could was, tell that he was enjoying it. I mean, because there was yeah, that interview yeah. back last year or whenever, earlier this year, when he was, he revealed by mistake that he'd got just this little small part in Doctor Who and he'd been yeah. desperate for ages to do it. So, so fair play to him, really. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, it was clear that he was having fun. And that's, mm. yeah, fair enough, really. It was nice to see him in it. Um, yeah, that's great. So, yeah, the plot, you kind of mentioned it in your mm. kind of expectations. We basically start off uh with the doctor getting a package from kablam and getting very excited when she sees the kablam man uh and uh she along with her fez that she's ordered she also oh, yeah. gets a um distress note uh which is quite a sort of like not cliche but like we're we're quite used to like that kind of opening for an episode like it's the been done quite a lot before like the doctor getting a distress signal or whatever yeah so, yeah but it was it was quite a nice way of doing it like uh inside a package 
Um, it was like she don't often get the doctor having a something delivered to her or it's yeah. not that type of thing usually so it's quite a nice twist on that yeah and it, thing really wasn't it and it was, it was quite a nice point that like ryan made that it could have actually just been someone messing about because like i can imagine those things yeah on the slip <laughs> uh, yeah like people getting bored when they're like packaging things up uh yes but yeah i just thought it was, it was quite a nice spin on what is normally quite a a standard sort of exposition like opening of an episode um yeah. so then they uh go to kablam this massive uh galaxy retailer um and kind of get themselves a job uh with some uh s- sort of sneaky use of the sonic um uh and uh kind of start investigating really um and yeah so what did you think about that kind of aspect of it like it's something we've have seen a couple of times before in the past like the the doctor and her companions or his companions like having to go undercover or having to like actually sort of get a job to to sort of find out what's going on um and it, i quite liked it because it kind of gave uh them all a chance to sort of go off on their own i mean i know some of them were together yeah they kind of had their own little uh, individual moments where they were kind of mm. working things out for themselves, which I thought was really nice. It was a good way to split them up and because they all kind of got a quite balanced amount of screen time each. You felt yeah. like sometimes in the past they've there's been instances of, you know, certain characters or companions having more screen time than others or being more in the focus. But here it felt like they were all kind of given a fair amount each because they yeah. all had those different subplots, different characters they were meeting. And it kept it quite varied, didn't it? Like, yeah, you had no, the one with Yaz and Dan and then Graham doing his cleaning work and yeah. all that kind of stuff. And it was it was good, yeah. Yeah, no, that's a good point you made there, actually, because I think I think if you were to look at all the episodes from this series so far, I think I think this one would be the most balanced in terms of oh, definitely. Like how much yeah. focus each so. character is given or mm. each main character. So, yeah, that was, qu- that was quite nice, especially after, like quite a few of the episodes where it's been very very heavily focused on one character Um, yeah uh, so it was nice for them to all be doing sort of their own thing and then coming and working together Mm -hmm. um and they find out that uh people are going missing in this massive retailer and that there's sort of various little things going wrong uh various sort of power cuts and like problems with the robots um like going wrong and eventually to cut a long story short um we find out that charlie the cleaner that uh graham's been working with uh is behind it all um (laughs) because he basically is a sort of technophobe and uh he he doesn't agree with the way the place is being run the fact that it's only 10 percent run by people um so yeah what did you what did you think of that um (laughs) reveal did you because i feel like it could have been really predictable and to be honest i feel like i yeah should have seen it coming but i didn't yeah yeah i've watched it back since and it is kind of seeded in there like when we first meet charlie yeah uh with graham and there's i can't remember off the top of my head but there's some dialogue that kind of hints yeah that there's something going on there he's not quite happy with things and how he's there in the background all the time as well doing maintenance work and it yeah um i mean it certainly catches you off guard i think on first viewing you're like what what's going on here yeah like when he he's revealed to be the villain and you're like okay he's like a side character yeah yeah. who might he might die or something like kira but no he turns out to be the villain so it was definitely unpredictable yeah um i mean in terms of the ending and like the message of the story I'm not quite sure like what they were going for because it's a bit confused in terms of uh, like what Charlie wants to achieve and then what ends up happening and he dies yeah. and I don't know that there's there's perhaps some muddiness there but overall it was a good good twist I thought I didn't see it coming at all no yeah I thought it was quite a nice sort of variation on on like a topic that comes up yeah. like, in in TV shows like technology like. Uh, eventually like getting the better of us like you see that in sci-fi quite a lot but Mm. it was quite it was a sort of different take on it it was kind of saying that like it's 
it's not always about the technology it's itself but it's about how who runs it and how they run it yeah absolutely Which I think is quite nice yeah uh kind of ties in with a lot of the episodes we've had this series with like humans being the the overall villains um yeah true yeah which is is it's something i've liked but i don't know would you have liked to have seen the robots that we've briefly mentioned before uh the i don't know what were they were they just called kablam the kablam men or postmen or um something? i think um, i'm not entirely sure i think it might have been delivery bots maybe delivery bots yeah, Post, oh, no, I don't know, something like that. Are they teammates? Um, I'll look it up actually, because there's That's there's a page can. on the Doctor website about it. I think. Yeah, but yeah, I just says the, the postman there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what I was going to ask was, would you have liked to see them be sort of more of a villain than they actually were, rather than them just sort of being used by Charlie? Um, in a way, maybe, but I think uh, two things. I think a that they were probably used better than the other monsters that we've seen so far this series in terms of how, how much screen time they got and they're always kind of there in the background as an ominous mm-hmm. presence and also like you say it was it would have been very predictable for the story to have just gone gone to that kind of failsafe ending and resolution where it's like oh it's the system yeah the company's yeah. at fault the robots and and so i kind of like how they didn't do that and they they mm-hmm. they you know they um kind of went against what you're expecting yeah. i don't know really i suppose as you say there are quite a few stories where that there have been humans human characters that are the main villains and that the side the monsters get sidetracked a bit like there's the the spiders we've had the thajarians uh, and now the the postman in this one so maybe in a future episode in one of the three that's left it would be nice to see a big big bad monster mm. creature some kind of prosthetic or cgi yeah. i don't know and Might I feel like I don't feel like that we'll get that in the next episode. This is kind of uh, <laughs> off topic. No, I don't no. feel like we'll get that in the next episode. But I feel like we might get it in the finale. I don't know about episode nine. I, I know we've got I think episode now. nine's yeah. meant to be quite like it's meant to be a remote Norwegian. Yeah, but I've, I just can't really... there, there might be like a big I don't know some kind of werewolfy type creature, yeah, well, and that, that might be quite nice. I don't know. I feel... I feel like definitely episode ten. Finale, hopefully, yeah, like, that that would be good. I mean, do you think it will be a returning villain or, or like a? Yeah. I don't know. I I think because at first I think everybody thought it was going to be the Stenza like after yeah, episode two. Yeah, because then yeah. And then they've not been mentioned since, and I'm wondering whether that is like part of a bigger plan. So the Stenza are just like a, a small part of something even bigger, where there's like a bigger villain, and cause yeah. there's this yucks or something in the finale apparently so uh, I, I, I don't know i don't know what to expect really in terms of yeah the big well, bad in the finale haven't haven't got long to go now until yeah so yeah, true I'm, I'm it's only 50 it. minutes <laughs> yeah yeah um but but yeah uh, going back to the postman delivery bots whatever they're called uh i i <laughs> whatever you think about them in terms of like the way they were used i i thought they were a really cool design they were yeah and i thought just the script for them was really cool because it like you could i can really imagine them being like sort of really annoying like bosses uh (laughs) some of the lines of dialogue they had like uh i think it's the scene where yaz is talking to dan and one of the the uh, robots comes along and is like, great conversation, guys. But can we get yes. back to work? <laughs> and yeah, just, absolutely. Like, just the sort of tone and the tone and the, the sort of dialogue works so well in a sort of robot yeah. voice. Uh, but yeah, I thought it was, I thought they were, I thought they were used well for kind of what they yeah. need to be. Uh-huh. Um, okay, so moving on now to the direction. What did you think of that in this episode? Any bits that stood out to you uh yeah i mean all the episodes this series have been directed really well uh, yeah but there are a couple of bits i mean in, in terms of the scale of this episode you got to see those big impressive cgi shots of like inside the mm-hmm. uh, the warehouse with all like, the parcels and the um the kind of set piece sequence where ryan and yaz and charlie are on that conveyor belt or whatever it is that was yeah that, well. uh, that was yeah. one of my favorite scenes and um, it's one of your sort of fun level oh yeah <laughs> uh, it reminded me yeah. i don't know if you've seen it's one of my favorite 
Christmas films, uh, The Polar Express. Do you know the scene where they go down the slide? Have you... I haven't seen it in a while, I'm afraid. Uh, no. I, I, I think it... I have seen it before, but... <laughs> yeah, there's this scene where they're, like, in Santa's factory, and they okay. go down this massive slide that all the presents are going down, and it just reminded me oh, of that. Oh, right, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I've I've seen a lot of people saying it reminded them of certain things. Uh, yeah. Toy Story Two was one mentioned. Oh yes, so yeah, I had seen Toy Story Two film. as well. Uh, but yeah. I, so I can't remember <laughs> what bit like they're referring to. But yeah, that Is was one the favorite. third one. The um, Toy Story Three at the end where they're like all the toys are on the conveyor belt and they go. Oh yeah, go. The whatever it is. The, yeah, the landfill thing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That was yeah, it. that was yeah. I, I really like that, and it was like shot really well, actually. Uh, mm. And it, there were quite a few green screen bits, and I thought yeah. they would have done pretty well, weren't they? Yeah, overall. That was, yeah. yeah, that scene must have been mostly green screen. Uh, yeah. And for what it, yeah, I think I didn't really sort of find myself going, "Wow, that is definitely green screen." Like. Absolutely. Yeah, it was it was done well, and like a bit of uh, um of all the postman at the end as well like that massive shot of yeah the, that was nice army of them. yeah that, that was really nice um yeah yeah and really well done the whole sort of look and design of the of the warehouse was really nice i think um the the design on this series for various sort of set pieces has been really really cool um, yeah the, the production design i don't yeah. know if you see on on twitter there are a couple of people that work on the show and they always like post the yeah. graphics and stuff yeah and yeah like the, so post- work that went the posters this one. like the one that dan was on the uh, logos and, stuff. and the logo yeah. yeah that was really nice um just it's just sort of little touches like that and i think i even saw i can't remember who it was that tweeted it i think it might have been one of the designers uh like said that the delivery slip that the doctor gets in the beginning that's got the like message on it had like all sort of delivery information on there like oh yeah like all the little details yeah, yeah even though you couldn't see it in shot it was still it's great how they, they put all that effort yeah. into it yeah that, there was one thing that i saw that was like a screen in the background of the evolution of the postmen from like the twirly oh, yeah. first robot to like the big human ones and you, you barely see it on the screen it's just there in the background in the reception area but it was i mean it just goes to show doesn't it the amount of effort they yeah. put in so even the smallest the smallest details yeah, definitely. yeah it's, it's really good yeah yeah uh okay what about the music were there any scenes that stood out for you for music wise um i didn't really notice it that much this, no i was gonna say that. i think yeah i think for me rosa and demons of the punjab have had the most kind yeah of definitely music well because of the end credits and then yeah for this one there was a bit at the start where there was like a little electronic kind of motif when they arrived at Kablam, but I, yeah. I mean, I've i watched it twice and I can't actually remember any any of the yeah, stories, to be honest. There's one yeah. bit I don't know. There's one bit where I'm not gonna try and like hum mm. it, describe it, but uh there's I think it's towards the end and it's a kind of like it's just a f- sort of few beats and it's quite sort of rocky. Looks like an army. quite heavy oh drum. yeah uh, they had like electric guitar stuff going on as well didn't yeah. they like in the background yeah i remember now it's, it's sort of like I a, the doctor's theme cropped up again as well at one point yeah it's yeah. it's sort of like just a few notes and then it changes to the next scene but it it's i i quite like that i don't yeah. know if it's part of like a bigger like instrumental uh score or there mm. or there it's just a sort of few notes but yeah it, yeah like you said there wasn't sort of anything that stuck out for me too uh-huh. much but just just overall this series i think the music has been really really good mm. it's been really refreshing i think to have the change and yeah like last week with the indian stuff and there's been a lot of variation i think across the seven episodes so far you've had kind of more modern stuff like electronic and then orchestral things as well and the indian singing and indian instruments and then Back to the electronic this week. It just you know, there's, there's loads of variation across the episodes. It's, yeah, uh, definitely. it's really good. Yeah. yeah, I've been saying this to a few people, but uh, mm. I kind of I didn't realize like until sort of towards the series was due to be airing how how much of a difference it was going to make not having Murray Gold because he's been the yeah. only <laughs> constant for the past 
like 13 years mm. uh, like even when the doctors and showrunners have changed he's always been there so yeah. I, I it kind of dawned on me quite late like how big of a change it was going to be so i yeah. think like because of that sagan's had like huge shoes to fill and i just think mm. he's done brilliantly yeah he has he has yeah. Uh, okay, so let's move on to some of the characters. We've already mentioned a few of them sort of individually, but uh, obviously starting with the Doctor, uh, what did you think of her in this episode? Any standout scenes or sort of lines for you? Again, I think it was a very, very strong performance. There were bits like um, when she was with Kira at the start and... She was like sticking up for her, her when the um <clears throat> when the boss came and was like rude to her. And yeah. the bit where she said, "You have a really nice approach to life." I thought that was a nice yeah. doctor moment. Um, yeah. And just ge- generally, when she like dissed the authorities, and there were some funny moments as well. I mean, she's she's great. Um, it was yeah, it was a, another great performance this week, really. Yeah, I feel like yeah. I feel like uh, Jodie was kind of having a lot of fun with this episode. Like yeah. Uh, various bits like definitely a fair scene uh which has uh got a lot of attention for obvious reasons um and uh the scene that you said um that really nice line to uh kira which i feel like it's a very doctor line in the fact that it if it was coming from any other character it would be really cheesy but from coming from the doctor it it just doesn't really yeah true yeah what it is um, yeah. Whether it's Jodie's performance or just sort of the character of the Doctor in general, but there was the um, the awe moment, as the awe moment when yeah, um, yeah. Kira and Charlie are together. That that was great yeah. as well. Yeah, that but was there, nice. there were a couple of moments like that, and I couldn't really imagine Peter Capaldi doing that. Yeah. There's yeah. like a few things in this episode that I saw as kind of unique to Jodie's Doctor, and that's kind of made. Yeah. Maybe kind you of imagine, like, appreciate Smith. her a bit more, I suppose. Yeah, for imagine perhaps. Matt Smith just sort of cringing, like whenever <laughs> in the presence of like Amy and Rory, like kissing, he'd just be like, uh, "Oh yeah, yeah, cringing. he would, wouldn't he?" Yeah. Uh, um, I, I think she's kind of coming into her own, own a bit more now. Like we're in the second half of the series, and she seems to be really confident in the role, um, yeah. and she's got like, her own mannerisms, her own little bits and bobs going on, which is good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think she's kind of having quite a few sort of consistently really good uh like speeches like i think you could probably say she's had at least one per episode but i feel like it's only in recent episodes that they've really sort of started to be sort of impactful yeah and for me it was it was episode five the starring of conundrum that was when i there was the stuff about the um atomic what do you call it yeah yeah Um, and then at the end when or like throughout when she was talking about being a doctor of hope and that kind of stuff and i was like yeah this is kind of good good docs moments before that there wasn't really anything for me that was kind of up there but yeah in that episode and last week's and this week's yeah yeah like the first episode obviously we had the i'm the doctor speech but that was only really to kind of have your sort of standard moment Uh, of the new actor finally saying that they're the doctor uh that was (laughs) just kind of Ticking a box, which I mean, it was nice. Like it was. Yeah, it was, it was okay for what it was. Yeah, but, but yeah, it kind of. I feel like it's only recently that that Jodie's really been nailing those sort of speeches. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I really liked the sort of one of the last few scenes where, like, her and uh, Charlie are having their sort of back and forth, like, uh, as to like why what he's doing is is wrong. Uh, I thought their sort of argument was really well. Uh, played out just in terms of yeah. like, the script and their acting because like Charlie like before he was revealed to be the villain uh, was kind of your standard side character like not very interesting kind of you feel yeah. a bit sorry for him um, and then when he when he turns out to be the villain he's kind of got to com- do the complete opposite but I, I mm. found the sort of switch really really kind of amazing like it it could have been really sort of jarring and not really realistic but it it felt quite natural like it had all been leading up to this and he just kind of broke at that point like yeah 
Um, but yeah, I thought I thought that argument was was probably that was probably my favourite scene of the mm. whole episode. Um, so yeah, um, just loving the Doctor so far. I haven't really had much to criticise her for really, apart from arachnids. Didn't didn't really like her in that. But okay, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, just j- just because. I mean, I said this in my review, but it just felt like she'd, we'd gone from like, obviously in the first episode, you expect her to be a bit like silly and like uh, yeah. crazy because she's just regenerated. Uh, but then she was kind of like coming into her own. And then in Arachnid, she kind of went back, I felt, to like the first, the, how she was in the first episode. Yeah, for me, um, like in the first few, there are a couple of moments where she was like a bit too enthusiastic, perhaps trying a bit bit too hard, maybe. Yeah. Um, but we've not really had that so much in recent weeks. There are a couple of moments in this one, like when she goes, when they, they land on the planet and she's like, Ryan, brilliant. And that's kind of, yeah. I don't know, maybe that's pitched a little bit. A, a little yeah, bit a too. little bit forced. Yeah, but uh, apart from that, she yeah, she is, I think, not better than she was in those earlier weeks, but she has found her feet a bit more. Yeah, in her right, grown into her own, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's stronger, yeah. Okay, so... What about Yaz? What did you think of her in this episode? It was another good one for Yaz, yeah. She got the, the subplot with Dan, which was really nice. Yeah. I like how they returned to that at the end. Yeah, that was a really nice ending. Yeah, that, that was a nice way to end it. Um, cause it, it. Yeah, it sort of came out of nowhere at the end. There was like, okay, or she's got a request. What's she going to ask the doctor to do? Yeah, but yeah. Came full circle and I was like, oh, okay. And that's really nice how that was that was resolved. And yeah, yeah. They, they all got something to do, and so it's great to see see Yaz, who's sometimes been a bit overlooked, get yeah, her own. I, yeah, like. I think he, yeah. Yaz is definitely kind of, uh, obviously last week more than ever, um, but yes. sort of this week as well. She's kind of, they've kind of made up for for the past uh, weeks of her being like mm-hmm. underused. I mean, it would have been nice to not have that like from the start. Uh, but yeah, I think I think yeah. they're kind of baking up for it now, mm. especially with especially with demons. Yeah, absolutely. Because I guess at the start there was rightly more of a focus on Ryan yeah. because yeah. of Grace, but yeah. at the same time, yeah, it's taken a little while for for Yaz. I mean, I don't think it's as bad as people have said it is in terms yeah, of her no. not enough screen time, but um, yeah, it no, has been not, nice to I've see her. Like, yeah, I've not not liked her. I just think I yeah, think that's like the thing as well because they're, they're all yeah, they're, they're all likable characters, and so yeah, yeah, there's no problems there. But it's, it's yeah, it's, it's good, like you say, to to have more of her, and there's there's the balance between the three of them that felt really spot on in this one compared yeah. to the previous ones, perhaps. Yeah, and I liked how in this one, this goes for all the companions. Really, they had their quite a few moments where they kind of figured things out for themselves and the doctor was sort of testing them and they were they were kind of inferring things and and uh kind of working things out uh like for themselves uh which is a yeah. nice progression to kind of see how far they've come from like the beginning of the series to nearly the end of the series now um yeah, yeah absolutely they, uh so moving on to Ryan now, um, pretty much the same as Yaz, really, because they mm. kind of all sort of had equal amounts to do. Anything you want to say in particular about Ryan? I liked how the uh, his dyspraxia came up again. That was a nice yeah. thing. That's not, that's not come up for a few weeks, so it was nice yeah. to have that. And there was that bit where they were just about to go down the chutes, uh, and it, this kind of links to what you've just been saying, but yeah. when when Charlie's like, oh, should we go without you? Because you're clearly having trouble getting down the uh, the chute. And he's like, that's not how I roll, is it, Yaz? Yeah. And he looks at Yaz. And there's that knowing look between them. And it's like, yeah. oh, they've come this far as characters and companions. Yeah. And um, there's that friendship there between them now. Uh, I mean, you could almost take that, like, that's not how we roll as a sort of uh, line to the sort of audience. Like, oh, yeah, like, I'm not going to give up now, like, after sort of yeah like, true all i've been through um true. but yeah that was it's a nice it's a nice line um and i kind of i quite like that we've not had sort of anything major to do with ryan's dyspraxia like we've not had a sort of 
whole story based around it mm. but it's just kind of come up every now and then um when you sort of just as you forget about it it kind of pops up again uh and it's it's quite nice because that's how it would be for someone in real life i'm assuming like yeah know, that's true yeah in their everyday life uh yeah so yeah it's, it's been nice to kind of have that thing to sort of root ryan on to like overcome like you're mm. kind of rooting for him uh and you you sort of want him to overcome it um but yeah that that was a nice scene uh i kind of hadn't thought about that but yeah that was that was probably my sort of highlight for him yeah definitely yeah okay so the last companion now uh graham uh graham in this episode oh it's great when he got the um <laughs> The, the last job that was going for the, the yeah. maintenance and the, the the mop and bucket that was that was yeah. so great but it kind of I don't know for me it kind of it felt it felt natural and it felt like I don't know I don't know how to explain it but because he's like the older old member of the TARDIS team it, it felt it was a funny little gag how he was how he's doing that job and yeah. it, it was just nice to have have him there you know because we, we don't really have a older companion usually and yeah. in addition to the others who are working and they were fit to work in the, the, the factory or warehouse itself doing the packing and stuff. It was just nice to have him there in the background doing the cleaning up. And then that also linked to Charlie, who we got to meet through him. Um, it was just another another avenue to like meet characters and go to a different place, which was really nice. Yeah. Yeah. I think you've summed it up there, really. I, I like in any of my reviews, I've not had anything bad to say about graham i just think he's, he's brilliant <laughs> oh he's brilliant yeah he's he's great absolutely yeah, amazing I can't, <laughs> can't really think of anything really uh but yeah he was just on top form as usual in this yes <laughs> uh okay so moving on to some of the guest cast now uh the first yes. of which is uh judy head of people played by uh julie now i'm not i'm probably not gonna get this surname right oh. Hes- hesmond Haug. Is that how I you think that's it? I think that's right. Husband Hal or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, um, I think so. Who I'm sure most most people that are fans of Doctor Who will recognise from Broadchurch series three, mm. where she obviously starred alongside Jodie. Um, so yeah, what did you think of her in this episode? Yeah, well, as you said earlier, it was great to see her again yeah. opposite Jodie, just in different circumstances, um, and playing a nice kind of quirky character. Because when they first showed us an image of her character i think it was back in the coming soon trailer in week one yeah. i was kind of like oh is she going to be a villain maybe yeah you couldn't sure. really tell could you? but um it was nice how she didn't end up being a villain and how she was just kind of a quirky little cheery yeah character instead so i don't know <laughs> i think it would have it would have ruined it a bit if she was she was the villain and yeah uh, i think i prefer seeing her in a, a cheerier yeah definitely. yeah <laughs> but also yeah she I was like- she was really good I also feel like she could have easily been really annoying, but she wasn't. She was quite sort of, uh, I don't know. She was just yeah, sort of a the nice character. character. Could have been a bit, a bit yeah. too enthusiastic, but yeah, yeah. it, it was is, rightly pitched. Yeah, I suppose it's kind of what you'd expect from someone with that job. Uh, yeah, they they're sort of responsible for making sure everyone's kind of feeling their best and like is doing the best they can and uh. is the most enthusiastic enthusiastic as possible. So you, I guess you would kind of expect that, but it it was kind of played in a sort of, in a sort of, for lack of a better word, not annoying way. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was it was nice to see her in this episode. Uh, uh, for yeah, just the reason that we mentioned already, mm-hmm. uh, just to see her opposite Jodie again. Um, yeah. Okay, moving on to my most anticipated guest star so far uh lee mack as dan oh uh, yes <laughs> sadly wasn't in the episode for very long but yeah. what did you think of him in like with the impression that he did make in the first well, yeah he, he wasn't in it too much but he certainly made an impact he did a great yeah. job um, i think yeah. I've, I've listened to another review where someone said he was basically just playing lee mac lee mac playing lee mac uh, yeah. which is it's sort of true as well i mean as i say he, you could just tell how 
much he was having fun with that role and how committed yeah. he was to it and um yeah he was clearly having a ball with it and his character was was good as well yeah um, but also there were there were a few sort of heartfelt moments with him like when he was talking about his daughter yeah true um, yeah you expect so yeah i i, I think i don't think we should i think it is a bit unfair to sort of cast him off as just another sort of funny guest character i think he yeah he did have some nice sort of lines of dialogue especially yeah, in that scene yeah. um yeah. but yeah uh like like we said it, it is just lee mack um and <laughs> you could tell he was just having the time of his life uh which is nice to see uh so moving on next to someone we've already talked about quite a bit uh charlie who obviously we said uh was the the evil mastermind behind (laughs) everything in the in this episode uh the the person behind the deadly bubble wrap uh so yeah (laughs) is there anything else you want to say about him or we kind of um i just think that I mean, I've not looked at what he's done previously, his previous no, work, but I think that, that must have been a genius bit of casting because presumably he's like he he can do sinister like that. He, they cast him because he could he could play villain villainous parts as well as the kind of uh, yeah. the, the maintenance guy, yes, uh, and so yeah. that, that that was that was good. Now he he wasn't such a well known actor that you immediately go, oh, okay, he's going to turn out to be the villain because yeah, yeah, he's done this before. Um, but how he could play both, I thought that was quite nice. A, a good bit of casting there because you don't really expect him to do that, but he, he does it really well. Yeah. yeah. And like I said before, the the sort of the reveal and the transition from him going mm. to this innocent, like naive, uh, just janitor uh, to the sort of evil monster <laughs> behind it all yeah. was, was quite sort of, like I said, I uh, I feel like I should have seen it coming, but I didn't. Um, but also, yeah. it 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 did feel quite a natural character progression. Like it didn't feel forced at all. Uh, no. Which I think it easily could have done. Um, but yeah, it, I thought I thought it was good, and his kind of motives and that were were kind of cleverly cleverly uh, sort of built upon throughout the episode. That mm. all, like all leading up to that big reveal at the end. So yeah, I thought he was uh, he was a very good guest character. Um, okay, finally, uh, we'll just mention quickly uh, uh, Kira. Um, Kira, yes. You, what did you think of her? <laughs> um, yeah, she she was great. I mean, one of the best little side characters so far. Um, she, the actor. Yeah, I just really did a great job at yeah. conveying that character and, you know, how happy she felt when she received a gift, all that kind of stuff. You, you really yeah. got got how nice. she felt and it was, um, you felt sorry for her when she died. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it was nice yeah. because they'd built, they'd kind of, uh, kind of brought that up before. And yes. She'd, she'd yeah. only ever, like, gotten one gift in the past and then it, it was this second gift that sort of killed her um which yeah. did it did make you feel really sorry for her um but yeah she was she was i suppose your sort of basic kind of disposable guest character um kind of you feel sorry for them and they you sort of know they're gonna die um but yeah she, yeah true <laughs> she, was, she was good for what she was actually yeah just about it now um i didn't think of this before now but she kind of reminds me a bit of uh oh what's his name from the woman who fell to earth the you know the side character in that uh oh carl carl Carl, yeah and the crane yeah okay (laughs) like just from like that scene where she's saying uh oh "Oh, every day when i come to work i I can do this yeah you you can do this like it's like carl with that yeah, that yeah, thing yeah. He played back to himself. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I hadn't made that connection. That's great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now we need like a big finish uh, series. And it's to meet each other. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Carl and uh, Kira. Oh, yeah. that works well. Alliteration. <laughs> yeah. Oh, big yeah. Finish. Get on that. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, um, I thought she was good for what she was. And, um, yeah. yeah. Can't, I can't remember her name, actually. Uh, played the part well. Mm. Um, I think that's pretty much it really uh uh so could you give me your like sum up of your thoughts uh and then your uh kind of score out of 10 uh if you can okay um 
overall, Kablam was uh, quite a traditional Doctor Who adventure, very fun uh, in pretty much every regard. It was, it was good. You had great side characters, great performances from the main cast, great set design, uh, really good CGI, nice scale of the planets, and it was a, a great roller coaster ride with a, a unpredictable twist at the end uh, that was maybe a bit random and the ending was perhaps a little bit confusing in terms of the episode's overall message but overall it was a very fun episode and one that I think kids in particular would have really liked uh, and so out of 10 I would probably give it an 8.5 maybe okay yeah, yeah. Uh, that's pretty good yeah my thoughts are pretty much the same as you I I think the overall sort of feeling towards this episode was that it was really fun um I thought the this it was really sort of creative and it felt very uh it felt very Doctor Who uh and mm. uh yeah I thought the the set design and the CGI was all really good um I thought it was great how the companions sort of had uh sort of the same amount to do and got uh sort of equal amounts of screen time and also that they were working things out for themselves I think that's a really nice sort of progression to see um, how far they've come. Uh, all the companions were on top form. Uh, the Doctor as well was brilliant as usual. Um, the guest cast as well, I think, were really good. I think some of the characters, like uh, like I mentioned before, some of them could have easily been quite annoying, but uh, I thought they were played really well so that they weren't. Um, the ending, uh, I thought the reveal was good. I didn't see it coming. Um, I don't know whether I should have or not. Um, but yeah, I didn't see it coming and it was surprising. I really liked uh, the Doctor and Charlie's sort of face off at the end when they were arguing. Um, so that was probably my highlight of the episode. Um, but yeah, the same as you, I did think the ending was a little bit kind of confused and maybe a bit rushed. Um, and overall, the kind of the stakes weren't very high so again that kind of uh, lessens the sort of overall threat of the episode um but yeah it, overall it was just a fun um episode not uh, my favorite in this series but uh, equally not the worst um so i'd probably give it a 7 out of 10 um okay okay yeah i think i think that's fair 7 out of mm -hmm. 10 but yeah, that's pretty much it, really. Uh, thank you, Richard, for joining me. Yeah, sorry, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, good, good. Uh, thank you for great. having me. It's been great. Yeah. And I will link your YouTube channel below if you haven't. Oh, thank you. If you haven't checked out, uh, definitely recommend it. Um, <laughs> and yeah, thank you for watching this video. Um, and I will see you all next time. Bye.